name is Casey Palmer. Um, my husband Jason and I own Palmer's Plumbing, and I am the outgoing chairman of the board for the Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'd like to start out this morning by thanking the Queen Anne's County Public School System for sponsoring this morning's breakfast meeting, as well as Mike and Helen Katinas, the owners of Annie's, for hosting us and providing this exceptional meal. Can we give them a round of applause? Um, next, I'd like to acknowledge that we have um, Carrie O'Connor from the school board joining us today. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to thank a few chamber board members who will be retiring from the board this year. If you would, please join me in offering a sincere thank you to Mr. Dale Walls of Corsica Technologies for his three years of service. Doug McCartan of Capriati Sandwich Shop and McCartan Insurance for his six years of service and Eric Hoffman of the Holiday Inn Express, who not only served as our chairman in 2016, but also gave us seven years of service towards the board. So today is officially my, the end of my tenure as the chairman of the board, and I'd like to thank all of you, our members, um, for all of your support during the last year. Being the chairman of this board um, was a professional goal of mine that I set many years back, and I just want to encourage you all to continue to strive for your goals, whatever they may be, because it feels pretty good. So now I have the pleasure of introducing the new chairman, 2018. Uh, this powerhouse of a businesswoman has been a member of our chamber for over 25 years, and during that time, she was the recipient of the Business Leader of the Year Award in 2014. Her company received the Environmental Awareness Award in 2005. For just as long, she's been a member of the Queen Anne's County Chesapeake Women's Network, where she served as their president for two, in 2005 and then again in 2016. She's a member of the Midshore Board of Realtors and the Bay Area Association of Realtors, where she's been named Affiliate of the Year several times over. Most recently, she served on a committee for the inaugural A Hero Golf Tournament that raised over $15,000 to help veterans transition into civilian life after their time in the military is through. It is my distinct honor to introduce to you this year's 2018 Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce Chair, Mrs. Eva Stoops with Chesapeake Environmental Labs. Good morning, thank you very much. Casey, don't wander too far. It is gonna be a very hard act to follow you. You did a fabulous job. I truly do enjoy serving on so many different committees over the years that we have known each other. But this one, you really did an exceptional job. Um, we would like to present you with this great black. Thank you so much for everything you have done for the chamber. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, before we get into our program, we are just a Tad tight with our schedule, so I want you to just get right into our program with Dr. Andrea Kane. It is with great pleasure I have the honor to introduce Dr. Andrea Kane, Queen Anne's County Public School Superintendent. Dr. Kane is an educator with an extensive background in teaching and leadership that spans from Head Start to higher education. After 22 years of dedication service to Anne Arundel County public schools. Dr. Kane joined Richmond Public Schools, Richmond City, Virginia, in August 2014 to serve in the role as Associate Superintendent of Academic Services, Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Kane joined Queen Anne County in July 2017. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Andrea Kane. Very good, welcome. share with you today some of the progress that we've made um, in 
last couple of years and some plans that we have as we move forward. Before I get started, though, I would like to introduce my team that I have with me. You already welcomed uh, our newest board member, Carrie O'Connor, so good to see her here today. And I also have with me Greg Kaluski, who many of you know, serves as our assistant superintendent. I also have Dr. Akita Pearson. She is our interim communication specialist, and she'll be man in that computer for me if I mess things up back here. <laughs> and you already know Jeff Spray, who's also in the Public Information Office. So I'm glad to have my team here to support me today. So we'll go ahead and move right along. And of course, we'll provide you some updates. And we'll certainly uh, work on continuing to build those relationships and, and hopefully to create some new opportunities to, uh, to collaborate with you and to build our professional relationships. I wanted to share with you the Queen Anne's County Public Schools vision. It is the same vision um, that they've had for the last couple of years. We've not done anything to it. I just wanted to point out to you some of the words that are significant, and we will come back to them today. So we certainly are envisioning ourselves producing well-educated, globally competitive students who are prepared to become productive citizens, caring and productive citizens. And of course, I'm not going to read for you our mission statement, but do take a look at some of the words that are highlighted, because they will resonate with you. We're looking to ensure that every student, every student demonstrates a commitment to high achievement, and that every day they are demonstrating excellence. And I'm saying that about our students, but I also expect the same thing of our staff, whether they are educators or support personnel, all of us should be moving in that direction every single day. We're looking at partnerships with our families, with our community, and certainly uh, producing a world-class curriculum so that we are able to ensure excellence in teaching, right? Teaching and learning, and providing our students with challenging educational experiences. Every time I meet with our supervisors and administrators, we go over our theory of action. So we can talk about our vision, and we can certainly talk about the mission, the way that we're going to make it to our vision, but we have to have an agreement of minds. And so our theory of action, and I am going to take a minute to read this to you, we talk about if we commit to work together to build shared knowledge, cultivate a collaborative culture, take the actions necessary to ensure that every student learns at high levels, and use evidence of student learning to inform and improve our collective practice, then all of our students will have the opportunity to meet their full potential for learning and to perform at high levels. That's significant to us. So at a glance today, we're going to go over the following areas. We're going to look at some dem demographics of our district. We're going to talk about some things going on in academics our financial res our fiscal responsibilities, some updates for operations, human resources, public information, and we're going to look at my goals and some projects that I have coming forward and, and opportunities to collaborate. So demographics. Queen Anne's County Public Schools by the numbers, we're about 7,800 students, and you can see the ethnic breakdown of those students with our largest areas being, of course, uh, white students at about 79, 80%. And then we've got uh, multiracial, just over five, black students just over five, almost 6%, and about 7% Hispanic. <coughs> Special education services, um, and, and of course we've got farms, and you see some data there representing our English language learner students, you see that, and our gifted, talented population. As you know, we have 14 schools and one alternative center, that's Anchor Points Academy. We've got about 1,200 full-time and part-time employees, about 1.5 million square feet in our facilities. We, uh, our drivers drive about a million miles each year on 77 buses, that's a lot, and about $97 million operating budget. A couple more facts for you. About 11% of our students receive special education services. You may not have known that. About 27% of our students qualify for free and reduced meals. And about 3% of our students um, qualify for English language learner services. And another 4%, just about, of our students qualify for gifted and talented services. 
So let's talk a little bit about academics. You probably heard, but if you didn't, I'm happy to share with you that Queen Anne's County Public Schools ranked number one in the state for English language arts for all middle school grades. That's six, seven, and eight. We rank second for in the state of 24 districts for English language arts at the 10th grade level. And you can see number three for mathematics in sixth grade. And how many of you remember if you have children in sixth grade, middle school is not an easy time. So these, these scores represent a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And it does take everybody. So it's not just the students. Those students are supported by family members and teachers and, and support folk at school. So I'm not going to read every single one, but you see in the state we rank number one in a few categories, but across the eastern shore where there are nine districts, we rank number one in several different categories ranging from English language arts to math, and, that, and the success continue. So for the eastern shore, we're either ranking one, two, or three in all of those tested areas for park, and, and up to about uh, under 10. Right, so we're, we're within the top 10 across the state. And that is something to be celebrated. So for second grade reading, because second grade does not participate in part testing, we certainly want to make sure that we are assessing our work with students and their mastery of, of standards. And we broke those out by schools. Uh, you may not be able to see, especially toward the back of the room, what those uh, schools are, but some of the higher performing schools are Centerville Elementary, Churchill Elementary, Kent Island, uh, Mattapeak um, Elementary, and some schools that are struggling a little bit are uh, Graysonville and Southersville, which by the way, you are not new to this county, I am, but we know that those are areas where many of our students who qualify for free and reduced meals live. So there are some challenges that those students are facing. On average, Queen Anne's County uh, ranks or, or scores at about 70% on average our students in second grade. And of course, by the end of 2021, we're hoping to see those students perform at about 90%. And so uh, what you're looking at at this point is a, um, some data for world languages. And we are, our indicator says that by 2021, 60% of all seniors will have completed three or more credits in the same world language. This is gonna be important because I'm gonna share some information with you about the budget survey that we just took. So as you can see, we are not close to, um, in some of those areas, we are not close to our goal because honestly, 60% is not a, a high number, right? When we talk about creating students or producing students who are globally competitive, we need to see more participation in world language. And certainly, if you're going to be able to speak the language, you're going to need to take more than one or two classes. So we're going to do uh, a better job with that. Um, I'm sharing this slide. This slide um, talks about HSA for government, which is on its way out. But I just wanted you to see, and I'll explain what it is. The first set of bars represents the school district, every student that takes government HSA. And this is the first time test taker. The second set of bars represents African American student scores. The third set, Hispanic student scores. The fourth set is special education, students that receive special education services. And the last set represents students who qualify for free and reduced lunches. The reason why I share this with you, not so much so that you can see where they're scoring, but I want you to see the discrepancies. I want you to see that across the system, we look pretty doggone good with a goal of 90%. We are within 0.2 or 0.3% of reaching that. But when you look at the student groups, the performance varies. So that's one point that I want to make with you as we talk about our performance in schools. Queen Anne's County looks great as, the, as an aggregate. But when you start to drill down into the data, you will see that certain student groups are not performing as well as others. And that represents our gap. And that is the work that we have to do to ensure that all students, so when we talk about our theory of action, and when we talk about our mission, every student and all students, that means these gaps have got to start to close. And this is a graph that represents students participating in rigorous course, coursework. So I'm talking about advanced placement tests or courses, honors courses, dual enrollment at the community college, 
And once again, the first set of bars represents everybody in the district. The yellow is last year the, or the year before, and the green is last year, 2017. So you can see the increase, which is excellent. But once again, when you break out to those different student groups, you see some significant gaps there. And you can't tell it from the back of the room, but I'll share with you for 2017, that's the green bar, the, the African-American students and the students that receive special education services, uh, they, the gap represents 30, 40, 50 points. That is significant. And again, this is the same type of information. This is about students earning college credits while they're in high school. And you see a similar scenario. So we talk about achievement gaps. So what do these things tell us? What does this data tell us? It tells us that we've got some significant achievement gaps within our student groups. It tells us that we have got to embrace a philosophy around equity and using equitable practices to ensure that all of our students have access, number one, to uh, rigorous programs and rigorous uh, testing and all of those kinds of things. And then we look at the disparities and inequities um, and sometimes inconsistencies, not only across our school district, but sometimes within the same school. So maybe the math department's doing something significantly different than the science department or the English language arts department, and all students aren't getting the same opportunities. So we've gotta do some work there. We look at our level of daily uh, rigorous instruction. So we've had an opportunity, I have several times visited all of our schools, but with some focused visits that I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, superintendent monitoring visits. And also we look at the uh, use of instructional time. So if there's six and a half hours or seven, and seven hours of instruction that happens in our schools every day, how are we utilizing that instruction? Because that also is gonna make a difference when we start to disaggregate our data. Academic interventions, some schools have one group of academic interventions or some strategies. Another school may have a different set. This is not a bad thing but we wanna make sure that every student has an opportunity to have their academic needs addressed appropriately. So if there are interventions that go on at one school because they have more minutes attributed to interventions than at another school who may have the same need or even a more significant need, but the structure of their day is not, is not appropriately addressing those needs, then we've got some inequities that we've gotta work with. We look at professional development and how we are preparing our teachers to, uh, to work with our students. We're talking about culturally relevant teaching strategies, um, some social emotional learning that needs to happen in our schools. All of those things are gonna impact the way our students perform. And of course, we're looking at varied approaches to monitoring our curriculum to ensure that we are teaching the right uh, standards and teaching them appropriately. So how do we do all of those things? What do we, how, do we put our, how do we organize ourselves? Well, Mr. P always talks about, with our administrators, prioritizing, focusing, and leading. So we've looked at the different areas that we need to work with, and all of them center around student achievement. We're talking about monitoring instruction, monitoring student learning. We're looking at equitable practices. Um, so lots of school improvement um, strategies and school improvement strategies that are aligned with district improvement strategies so that we're all singing off the same song sheet, if you know what I mean. And then we also look at the findings that we had in the curriculum management audit. And those findings are recommendations that we are implementing and we organize ourselves into five different groups so that we can get that work done. Those groups have to do with learning goals. They look at the materials of instruction and the tools that we use to teach student, students our early learning work. We certainly look at our leadership um, practices and how we teach our leaders. And then certainly we look at how we monitor our progress. Some things that we have going on in the Office of Curriculum and Instruction. I mentioned earlier to some of you our work with uh, Chesapeake College around Early College Academy. So we are creating a program in collaboration with Chesapeake College to ensure that our students have the opportunity to earn an, an associate's degree by the time they leave high school. 
Um, and, and we have some awesome uh, commissioners that are working with us and partnering with us because we mentioned some of those inequities for dual enrollment have to do with transportation. And so just because some students don't have transportation, they don't have access to those programs. And so they're working with us to ensure that we get some transportation going for our students who are able to uh, participate in those college programs, and that is significant. We look at our career and technology education. We're looking at where we are, what programs we have, and if the programs we currently have are programs that are needed for the workforce. So if we're teaching skills or putting children on a career pathway that does not address an economic demand, a need, then we've got to look at that. So we have to ensure that there's alignment there. We're looking at STEM programs that we're beginning. We've got some going already, uh, some awesome robotics programs and um, with uh, NOAA grants and, and those kinds of things. We know that we need arts integration in our schools and our budget surveys said that to us. So the, the community spoke and we certainly are listening. In addition to world and classical language offerings. Currently at uh, middle school, we offer Spanish, that's it. At high school, we offer Spanish and French. Across the country, across our state, students are participating in Italian, Arabic, all types of languages, Chinese. When we talk about a globally competitive student, we have got to do some work with our world classical languages. Online, online learning opportunities. We are excited about some partnerships that we are trying to work on that will give our students um, greater opportunity and flexibility to take some courses online and perhaps pull back some students that are homeschooled um, that may want to take advantage of some online courses. So we're working on that. And of course, uh, additional um, alternative ed opportunities. So let's talk just a little bit about fiscal responsibility. So the budget survey that we administered, there were about 300 respondents. Now mind you, everybody didn't respond to every question. So sometimes there were 300 respondents, sometimes there were 284 respondents, and that sort of thing. But of them, 94% were folks that have children in our system currently, 4% have, have uh, had children in our school system formerly, and then about 1.6% never had students attend our school system. And you can't see this, but what we did was we asked uh, folks to rank order some of our priorities. And I gotta move forward so I can see. Um, so some of those choices had to do with um, high levels of achievement, uh, graduating college and career ready. Student class sizes was the second one. Uh, competitive salaries for teachers and staff. Classroom technology, that was uh, pretty significant responses there. And then we looked at um, uh, textbooks and, and instructional material materials. We certainly looked at the uh, facilities and, and renovation or, or repair of buildings and then after school programs and they ranked in that order from one to seven. Some of our additional priorities that our families or respondents to the survey asked for once again had to do with being in uh, participating in arts programs, world languages. They wanted us to pay some more attention to uh, special education and to STEM. So what we did was we broke out for you how the county, and this is right from the county, how they allocate their budget. And as of fiscal year 18, which we are in right now, the school system receives about 41%, over 41% of the county's uh, budget. And being the largest employer, yes, that makes sense. But you can also see some of the other areas. Uh, the public library is there in green. Public works is there in orange. I'm going to share this presentation with you so that you can take a close look at it. We wanted you to see how the um, allocation to our school system from the county has sort of dropped as fiscal uh, situations have, have dropped across the state. So we had certainly shared our brunt of that. So back in 1998, we were almost at 55% of the county's budget. And as of last year, we were at about 41%. And last year must have been, and I wasn't here, but must have been a pretty tough year because there was a zero increase to the allocation for the school system. And once again, I'm not going to share or, or ask you to read this, but I'll share the PowerPoint with you. And it, it just repeats what I just said. Last year, the red that you see at the bottom was a 0% increase in maintenance of effort, or over maintenance of effort. Now, <clears throat> this graph shows 
The yellow line is the wealth of the district, and the wealth in this um, district has, or this county, I should say, has been pretty steady over the last 20 years or so. But the, <clears throat> the amount that we spend on per pupil allocations has steadily pretty much declined. Our cost per pupil um, in comparison to the state, the yellow line represents an average for the state, which right now is just about 12, 13,000. Um, uh, the red line is Queen Anne's County, and that is continuously below the average for the state. And we're talking about the pu per pupil cost, what we pay for each student. Now this uh, chart shows the Board of Education, our operating fund revenue, and where we get our dollars from. And of course that biggest amount comes from the Queen Anne's County at about 57%. Then the next largest, over 30%, is about 35% comes from the state. And then the others have to do with um, <coughs> federal funds and, and state restricted funds and that. Our allocations, how we spend our dollars, of course you can imagine that the largest portion, that gold portion over to the right is instruction, and that's gonna be salaries and everything that has to do with teaching children. The, large, the next largest has to do with employee benefits, that's that pink area over to the left. And then you'll see transportation falls in there, um, and, and, and so on. And what this chart shows are the dollars that correlate with that pie chart, the percentages that you just saw. So we're at about a $97 um, million dollar budget, 96.78. Transportation, of course, we're always working on uh, school bus safety. Um, we're providing training for our bus drivers. They participate in that. And we are constantly recruiting new drivers, constantly, constantly. We can't get enough drivers. That's across the country, there's a shortage. Um, for in the area of technology, we are planning for replacements um, and upgrades to the technology devices that we currently have in the hands of students um, and looking for cost effective ways to ensure that we can repair or replace them. Um, and then, of course, developing a district wide standard for the purchase of projectors and smart boards and those things that have not been consistently. Um, uh, or there hasn't really been a well thought out plan across our district for which schools have what, which products we use, the plan for repairing and, and replacing. <coughs> and of course for our buildings, um, we're gonna continue to advocate for yearly funding and we're going to enhance our building security by adding some new cameras, card access controls, and certainly safety hardware. And then we're also going to work on developing a schedule for routine maintenance, such as painting and flooring replacement, those kinds of things. And uh, furniture, that was an interesting aha for me when I came. Uh, there is no real uh, allocation for furniture. Um, how many in here have an office? You may work in a situation where you don't work in an office. My office furniture is 27 years old. I'm not kidding, 27 years old. There's no allocation for furniture. So we've got we've to do a better job there. <laughs> Human resources, certainly lots of work to be done there. We're revising plans to recruit and retain a diverse workforce. Somebody can help me back there. Is that the community collaboration? Is that what <laughs> uh, Develop a, a partnership with Bowie State uh, University so that our paraprofessionals can earn their teaching certification, sort of a grow your own program. Uh, we're developing a more efficient system for policy development and revision. We're really excited about that. And developing a district handbook for all of our employees centered on expectations for performance and conduct. And we're looking at system-wide Title IX training um, for employees and for students. Some challenges that we face in our human resources area, we struggle with finding highly qualified minority teachers. For, to build that uh, diverse workforce. And all you have to do is look at the front page of our website, and every year that picture of new teachers looks exactly the same. There is hardly any diversity there. We have got to change our recruitment strategies, and we will. Um, we struggle with stagnant, low wages, high turnover for support employees, that's custodians, substitute teachers, paraprofessionals, even our home hospital teachers. And this is a true story, and I say it for impact, but it's true. Uh, recently, we, because our custodians turn over so frequently, the pay is so low, 
there was one gentleman, he wanted to move from a day shift, uh, from a night shift to a day shift. And in doing so, he lost his small, small, small evening differential. So by the time it was said and done, that gentleman was earning $9.28 an hour. Now, remember, I believe in July, there's legislation that's gonna change minimum wage to at least $10. So that's the kind of situation we face. And, and right behind that, I listed House Bill 1, and that's the Maryland Healthy Working Families Act, or that sick leave bill. We have not um, estimated just yet. We're working on how that will impact the school district. What that means is all of our paras, those five-hour folks, our substitutes, our uh, substitute bus drivers, all those folks will need, will need to provide sick leave for them. So folks who don't have to work every day, for example, subs, we will have to pay for them when they are not going to be working. So that may be a significant impact for the school system, which we do not have a dollar amount to tie to that yet. Our public information office, happy to say, uh, where uh, both Mr. Strait and Dr. Pearson work, we are adding partnership responsibilities to that office and we'll be renaming, restructuring that office to community relations and partnerships. We're going to focus on some upgrades to our website, uh, make it more interactive, bring it up to the 21st century, improve organization of our district events um, so that we have some better collaboration with our partners for uh, special events, whether it's Teacher of the Year, Adopt-A-Bear, uh, teacher recruitment, all those types of things. We're gonna be managing district um, MOUs so that we can understand who's supposed to do what and what our responsibility is in that as well. We're going to be coordinating some outreach efforts with our partners and we're also going to use that office to coordinate some of my events and you may have heard about some of my advisory councils that I'll, I'll share with you in just a second and also they're putting me on the um, Queen Anne's County television uh, channel which we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, some reorganization is going to be required because of the changes that we want to make to public information which impacts uh, human resources and my office. So that office is going to report to me. Um, it currently reports to human resources, but public information uh, will report to me now. Um, operations um, and curriculum are going to make some changes because I'm going to take technology from operations and put it where it should be in curriculum and instruction. Uh, superintendent uh, monitoring visits. That is our regular uh, visits to schools and they are some pretty extensive uh, half day visits to all of our schools. We're meeting with leadership teams, we're observing classes, we're talking with students and families um, and giving some feedback to our, to our principals and leadership teams. We, are, we go around to all of our schools and meet with principals individually to develop their goals uh, for student learning and we are improving over and reviewing some of our district structures uh, to ensure that we are operating most efficiently and effectively. And, and I just wanted you to have some information about my advisory council. So I've created a student advisory, a staff advisory, parent advisories, and we will be working toward a business advisory uh, coming soon. My show is called Talk Soup. Uh, I hope that it is entertaining and informative, so we'll, uh, we'll hope to see some of you on that show, and when we extend the invitation to you, I hope you accept. Mr. P always reminds me of which day I'm on, because, you know, as the superintendent enters, we have to share with the board and the community our 90-day entrance plan, but mine has extended, so we're going about a day 134 right now, the 134th day. And what I've done is started out by listening. That's what these little circles are for friends in the back. I start out by listening and learning. Those are the first two circles. And then I start to build a plan um, or, or really build relationships so that I can gather folks to build a plan, engage um, partners and, and our school system folks so that we have all voices heard. And right now we're in the stage where we are planning and beginning to execute some of those uh, um, goals for our plan. And I just wanted to share with you some of the major points of my goals. I have seven goals, um, and I'll just briefly go over them. I'm monitoring the performance of students, staff, and administrators. I have to measure school culture by administering a climate survey that'll happen this spring. I am ensuring that the curriculum management audit, uh, audit recommendations are prioritized and implemented. We are aligning education programs, plans, and resources 
with the district's vision and goals. So that's why I keep coming back to the budget survey and what we said in our vision and what we said in our mission and that uh, theory of action. And of course, I'm engaging in professional development, which I'll be uh, running off to as soon as I get finished here. Um, and these are two pretty uh, hefty ones and, and difficult to measure, but we're going to make a, uh, a point to move forward with. But ensuring that we're engaging employees and partners in plans to strengthen inclusive and equitable practices, expanding access and opportunity, and improving teaching and learning so that students in Queen Anne's County Public Schools have the opportunity to achieve, all students have the opportunity to achieve at high levels and then of course to determine effective central office structures designed to support those equitable learning outcomes and aligned with an instructional focus to support teaching and learning improvements so those are the seven <coughs> things that uh, I will be measured against uh, at the end of the year we're going to continue to talk about equity every time our, our teams get together we're talking about equity and equitable practices and I just wanted to resonate with you the importance of our collaboration because all of our improvement is going to require everyone. So the community, our parents, our students, our educators, all of that leadership, strong relationships, that's what brings success. And our community engagement, that means our business partnerships, community partnerships, all those folks that I mentioned, and of course student voice being in there, focusing on some cross-generational learning. Um, so we certainly do appreciate all that come and volunteer. And uh, community partners designing solutions to local challenges. We all live here. We all have an investment in our students and our, our school system. And so I believe the challenges that we face, we can do those things together. And finally, I just want to leave you with something that you know I, I pretty much live by, and you probably do too, given the work that you do. And because people in the back can't see it, probably I'll read it for you. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it has to run faster than the fastest lion, or basically it's going to get eaten. Every morning, a lion wakes up, and it knows that it must run uh, faster than the slowest gazelle, or it's going to starve to death. Moral of the story, it doesn't matter if you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better start running, because we have work to do, right? So thank you for your attention. I am happy to entertain any questions that you might have. If there is time for that, I'm not sure. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, that was, uh, that was enlightening. Thank you very much. We wish you much, much success. For 2018, we hope we, you reach those goals. So good luck to you and your staff. We're a team. Yes, you are. It's a great team. Thank you. Um, OK, so we're going to go ahead and go back to our program now. Um, I just have a few things that I want to um, start off with for 2018. Um, first of all, thank you for this opportunity and the honor to serve this great organization as your chair for 2018. I promise this year will be filled with renewed energy and great networking. Um, I want to make a couple comments um, about what we have going on this year. Um, first of all, uh, workforce development. This will probably tie in right with Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, it's a program that Linda Friday has really taken a hold of and has run with it. I don't know where she went. But she has really done an exceptional job. It's learning today for a successful tomorrow. It's going to be a great partnership with the business trade community and the school system. It's a wonderful opportunity for some of our county youth to find that attending a college is not necessarily a great fit for them. And they're more ready for a hands-on experience. So for the business community, this is an opportunity to train, nurture, retain prospective long-term employees, employees that want to grow in the company. Um, and this is going to be starting, I think, starting at the middle school age, trying to educate all the way through high school. Um, we're going to be working closely. This is, you'll have more news coming down the line about this. I don't know about any of you guys, but I have always hired high school interns at our company. It is so rewarding. And it's even more exciting to see them get excited about the environmental field that we're in, and they pursue that when they go to college. So that's very, very exciting. Um, another thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention 
is our Chamber's website. It's a free opportunity with hot deals, job postings, press releases, and a community calendar for events. Uh, we have additional opportunities for you to do e-blast, banner ads. You can enhance your listings on the Chamber website and you can check with um, any staff member or give Linda a call or Tracy a call at the office and they will go through that for you. It's a great website filled with excellent information. Um, at this time, I want to introduce our board of directors. Um, this board of directors uh, is a great group of people and I promise this year we'll have some renewed energy and some great networking. So. Tammy Rosendale, Rosendale Realty, if you could just stand up, wave. All right, that's good. All right, Chris McGargy with Resource One. Is she here this morning? Kathy Kendall, Queenstown Bank. Mark Lacoste, Best Western. Okay, Suzanne Lushinsky, Anne Arundel Medical Center. Good morning, Suzanne. Robert Woolley, the Edge Training Academy. Good morning. Uh, Gail Roop, APG Media. Uh, Ryan Eber with at the Atlantic Title Group. Good morning, Ryan. Casey Palmer, past chair, Palmer's Plumbing, did a great job. Ralph Twilley, treasurer, Shore United Bank. Good morning, Ralph. Susan Vienna, secretary, Fisher Gate Graphics. She does excellent work. Bill Colhey with vice chair, and he's with Edward Jones. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you guys for the dedication to this organization. All right, and uh, just a couple exciting things. Our mixers, how many attended the Christmas mixer, the holiday mixer? How many people had fun? Who won the money? Just saying. Just saying. Okay, so we're planning on having more mixers like this. Um, only because it's just engaging, it's fun, it's upbeat. It's a great way to network. So um, I think March we might be having something kind of wild and crazy coming up. Do you want to say anything about that, little Miss Susanna? Or Susan? <laughs> um, yeah, as you know, the last one that we did for Christmas was uh, we were looking for a few good elves. And I did a little design of that little elf thing. So we have a little bit of a good Very good. Thank you so much. 2018 is going to be a great year, you guys. So I want uh, you guys to go today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Be a prosperous 2018. And I'll see you at the next Mixer, which will be in February, with details that come shortly in an email. Thank you very, very much.